Ahoy there listeners and welcome to the Captain's Horror Meltdown. My name is Cammy, and as always I will be your captain on this journey and I'm joined Ooh, okay. as ever by the ships. I haven't really thought about this one. Oh, I don't see it. Mm, ship's head. Ooh. Uh, navigator. Oh, thank God. I thought you were going to say head. Uh, you could have gone. It could have been pretty ropey. Yeah, I thought you were going to say. It could have been pretty ropey. I thought you were going to say head rapist. Um, uh, we well, considering it's only the two of us on the ship, well, we've proved that it's not really, isn't it? Because yeah, sometimes, yeah, I keep, keep forgetting that Doc and Dave are on the ship. People but they hardly ever come up yeah, to say hello. Come out the cracks now and again. We just totally. well, we don't let them out the engine room. That's their place. That's that's where they need yep, to be. That's exactly that's where they need to be. Uh, they are both in there just now. We I've set them the task of. Uh, Dave is currently sanding the paint off the floor um, and uh, Doc is repainting it immediately behind him. And then Dave comes in behind him, sands it again. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> that's, totally. That's how we keep keeps them, them, busy, keeps them going. I mean, we could have furloughed them, but it's a job that needs done. Absolutely. So they don't even know about the coronavirus. We've just kept that under our hats. Um, just keeping the sanding and painting going like nothing's ever happened. Because yeah, exactly. the because the thing is we didn't pay them in the first place anyway. Exactly. So it's, exactly. So it's been of absolutely no consequence to us at all. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's been brilliant. Perfect. <laughs> uh, you, of course, are our um, head navigator because we are looking for a very specific address today. Oh really? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. we're looking for the last house on the left, aren't we? Oh, that is specific. So you've got to navigate. <laughs> you've got to navigate there. You've got to be able to count, and you've got to know your left and right. I mean, it could easily go very wrong for you. Yeah, it could. It doesn't really specify what street, though. No. I mean, are we going to just visit every last house on the left on every street as a process of elimination? Mm, yeah, possibly. Also, it kind of depends what direction we're sailing in, what's on the left and right. I, I, I don't think it matters. My takeaway is it's going to take a very long time <laughs> to find this Yeah, we might account. be looking for a while. Might be looking for a while. This could be our last episode um, as we go on a new journey trying to find an unspecified last house on the left. Lovely. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is, we uh, obviously we're in the middle of lockdown. We're still in the middle of lockdown. Actually, we should date this, really. Oh, yeah, sure enough. Uh, where are we today? We are on Wednesday, the 8th of July, 2020. Freaking unbelievable. Yeah, we're but- back in March, we were saying that. <laughs> that i know i know like what's going to happen oh we might be here till april maybe we might be here till <laughs> who knows we might be here till may here we are in july yeah july i think we we in scotland tomorrow are about to move into phase three hopefully of um our lifting of lockdown um yep so we'll see what the old first minister has to say about that tomorrow exactly where we are because yep. that was the kind of surprising uh, thing about when they announced the, the, the second one, is that they didn't not everything in the second phase happened on the same day. They kind of staggered it throughout that phase, um, which I think kind of threw a few people off. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. We shall see what's going on. Yeah, totally. Uh, and, yeah, pubs are open again in Scotland, so the world hasn't uh, collapsed. Yeah. Some quite quite a lot of madness at the weekend down in London. It looked that uh, way, yep, yep. Um, of course, uh, there has been madness in Scotland as well. There's already been footage of people just fighting mm-hmm. uh, in car parks and stuff. As uh, <laughs> Basically, Scotland, we don't have a lot of beer gardens. Uh, well, I- so the pubs have been basically putting tables and chairs in. Like, Also, we don't really have proper car parks in a lot of pubs. Not, certainly not in the city, yeah, no. I mean- no, I mean, pubs that do have car parks quite often tend to just be like, a bit of dirt. I think so. And I think, you know, they've come to the conclusion, like in Scotland, it's, you know, having a car park at a pub is an f- absolutely fruitless venture because everybody going to that pub is going there to get smashed. Yes, exactly. So it's just like, just, you know, find it, find it, just get a taxi for fuck's sake. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you're right. Yeah, there's not many car parks. There's not many beer gardens knocking around, um, mainly because it's Scotland and there's only sit outside for about, fuck knows, 10% of the year. <laughs> 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But, I mean, people are having to set aside now mm -hmm. because you're only allowed to set aside. I, do, uh, I mean, I don't know. There's been a mad clamour for people wanting to go back to the pub. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not... Couldn't actually give a shit. At this moment in time, I, I, I know. I just I don't, don't care. honestly. I'm like, well, I think about going to the pub now. I think, oh yeah, I'm going to pay four quid for a pint. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. Four quid probably for a pint of like tenants or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what if I can waste the time and money? <laughs> <laughs> we can, I mean, lockdown has like proven to us that we can all just be alcoholics in our own homes. Yeah. Um, and still sort of hang out without him to. Have that exactly. We can all awkward hang out physical it's interactions. Fine. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I miss uh, I miss the hand jobs, but hey ho, you know, get over it. Um, but I mean, the the big news. I mean, I guess whoa. the big news for me this week. I mean, completely ignoring. We're not even going to go into like any of the madness that's going on in the states and all the rest. Big news for me is that um, this week, uh, bubonic plague has come back. Oh, what? I mean, quite an uplifting story that was. 2020, absolutely fucking storming it. <laughs> was it M Mongolia, was it? They got it first, yeah, I yeah. think. And it's in Russia now as well. And, and then somebody in China ate a marmot. Um, oh, so they've had to ban people from eating marmots. I mean, what's the fucking world coming to when you can't eat a marmot anymore? <laughs> <laughs> it was one of my preferred <laughs> snacks on the day, but um, exactly. But uh, it's, uh, I fucking love that picture um, that I sent. Oh, that was amazing. With it, I could think like one nature photo of the year. <laughs> that marmot. It was like a shocked marmot. Yeah, absolutely. Oh man, what man? Imagine you. Imagine it. Imagine you take that picture, go home, fired in your car, got the computer, just like, oh man, I have struck gold here man it was definitely a mistake as well oh yeah like i mean there's no way that that, that, that they, they, they i'm gonna would wait for a to shock to marmot <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that the wolf looks like a normal like <laughs> sort of wolf killing like machine. a sort of sca scary like sort of growly sort of doomy <laughs> Wolf, the marmot looks like he's been drawn in a fucking Looney Tunes episode. <laughs> I mean, he's totally. properly like standing. He's put a sort of human pose. Yeah. His eyes wide open, like something out of fucking Roger Rabbit. If his eyes were coming absolutely. out in stocks, it wouldn't have surprised me. It was exactly. fucking absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Well, no wonder he's probably worried he's got bubonic plague. Yeah. I mean, fuck's sake, fucking bubonic plague, man. It's the last thing you need, really, isn't it? What? It's what? And then they're saying that um, all the ice melting in the the um, South Pole, South Pole, South Pole, North Pole, one of the poles, <laughs> um, it's just going to reveal lots of uh, diseases that we've never encountered before, they reckon. Yeah, yep. Yeah, uh, come back <clears> to life. I was so doing an interview with some, um, some really upbeat... <laughs> Science motherfucker. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I mean, you know, if we get this under control, it's just a matter of time till the next one happens. I'm just like, okay. That's true, isn't it? Cool, That's cool, true. cool. So, I mean, it kind of makes you wonder why we bother. May as well just um, embrace it and hope for the best. Well, I've basically, I'm, I've just absolutely completely submitted to it now. I'm just like, I effectively, I, I'm retired. I've just, just retired. Just retired. Done. Absolutely done. I don't have any money. Well, no, but, no, but you know, squat. Well, you've only, you've only got what? Not what? <laughs> Thirty years to wait for your state pension to kick in. Yeah, I mean, it's going to have gone up by then. It's probably going to be eighty or something by the time we reach that age. I There's no way it's going. What is that? Just now, seventy. Yeah, I, I reckon they'll probably start issuing it <clears throat> once you get a terminal disease. <laughs> that'll be that'll be the new measure. Issue, well, they'll issue it like about a week before you die. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And it'll still, yeah, totally. it'll still be the same amount as it is now. Yeah, you'll just be, yeah. We'll be, so I you mean, probably buy like a, a, a local paper and a can of export just before you pop your clogs. Fucking job oh, done. Delicious. <laughs> a delicious can of export. <laughs> oh, nice. <sighs> Lovely. Um, right. I mean, I mean, to, I mean, the, the one thing before we, well, we better move on to films. We probably guess, should. But we, they, we've, we've, we've started this, started rambling somewhat at the start of these, but we'll try and get through it. Well, I mean, I, well, the one thing I wanted to say, which was, uh, if I, I'm not going to name it, I'm not going to mention any specific names or anything because of, you know, contractual obligations and all the rest, but no. it looked like I wasn't going to be working until next year uh -huh. now because of this. Because working 
film and TV. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very, you know, mm-hmm. nobody really knew how it was going to work. How we're going to get the actors together again. How are they going to be able to stand within two meters of each other? How to be socially distanced or create all the rest, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Wasn't expecting to work again until next year, pretty much. Got a call last week. Oh, we're going back on the 17th of August. Is that confirmed? It's like, holy shit, right? Holy shit. We're going back on 17th of August, right? Jesus. So I was like, fuck, it's almost too soon. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. To psychologically prepare myself. Oh, you need at least right? a couple so, of months, I would have thought. Well, exactly. But then I was like, I had a whole barrage of questions. Like, how's this going to work? What are we going to do? Like, how, what, like, what procedures are getting put into place? I don't want, look, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We're going to work it all out. We're going to work it all out. It's going to be fine. I was like, yeah, yeah, this is just, okay, fair enough. But it sounds like total bullshit. Anyway, so my uh, my boss uh, calls me the end of last week and she's like, yep, no, I start on Monday. Oh, what? Fucking New locations. So she started on Monday. Right. Right. Working from home, obviously, we can't get a production office up and running again. There's no way you can do any of that sort of stuff, right? So she goes out, so she she starts having a think about it. So she starts working on Monday, Yeah. basically, speaks to the director, who's down in London, um, mm-hmm. see what we need to find now again and what we're looking for and all the rest. Location, like, starts phoning other locations, like, existing locations that we had that have now fallen through, we can't film at. Blah, blah, blah. And uh, then yesterday, so that was Monday. Then yesterday, Tuesday morning, I get a message from her. Half nine in the morning. Job's cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. It's like, right, what? Jesus <laughs> like, Christ. Yeah, we can't actually literally go and look into anybody's house or we can't go to any business <laughs> at all because you're not allowed to people's you're not allowed to you? I mean like I mean moving into phase three tomorrow that can means be that on. you'll be able to right. like have a limited amount of people yeah, yeah. potentially going to one other household right to safely distance from each other in that household yeah Jesus. not not t- not t- not turn up for business reasons to wander around multiple <laughs> households during the day with pe- with a group of people. Yeah, yeah. Have you thought about... So that shows um, how little they'd actually thought about yeah, it. Yeah, like, we're going to do Absolutely, this. Absolutely, like, then like, literally oh. zero thought had gone into it. They, they just, came up with just, like, just came up with the start date and hope everything else would fall into place. <laughs> yeah, totally. Cracking. Totally. Well, it's mad. Well, Have you thought about robots? Uh, have we thought about robots? We could get robots. To or have that. you That'd thought about... Great getting this scout and wrapping her in tinfoil and pretending she's a robot? Oh, we could do it, actually. That'd be quite good. There you go. Job, sir. That'd be quite fun. Well, I mean, a uh, friend of the podcast, Mod, who's a, who's a, who's an avid listener. Oh. Uh, hello, Mod. Apologies, Mod. Thank um, you very much, though. He, uh, well, yeah, I mean, like, we, we all kicked into, we all sort of, like, started thinking about stuff. Yep. Mod, Mod was instantly right. Okay, we'll start talking about hiring the kit again and all the rest. Nah, fucking. <laughs> I mean, do, uh, how the fuck are we going to do that? Uh, anyway, <laughs> Jesus Christ. What a disaster is it, it's the, going to the be. The pinnacle of a logistical nightmare. Lovely. Absolutely. How do we get 100 people all close together in one space filming? And like basically what is now, you know, five weeks' time or something like that? Just have people. Shout each other from distance. <laughs> <laughs> An absolutely vast set. You know, oh, it reminds me, it reminds me of the um, uh, Redemption release of Deep Red. <laughs> when you got that conversation oh, yes. in the square, maybe something like that. Maybe we could all be shouting, <laughs> yes. shouting across the square, but so far apart that the camera can't actually get either of you into the shot. Well, big problem again, not naming any names or anything like that, but I think I've potentially mentioned it before the show but the show is set on a submarine uh, a big one <laughs> not, not the biggest what about like the submarine is, is that thing in the mega submarine oh that what that is almost like an underwater layer mm, or what, yeah maybe you could maybe you could just you know just fucking get the budget fucked out the window and go insane yeah 
You can spend like- and quite funny because we've already shot three episodes. So <laughs> suddenly, suddenly it went from being a really, really small submarine to a huge submarine. That'd quite be, impressive. That'd be absolutely amazing. I'd Maybe that's the kind of shit that's just going to have to happen. I think that people are just going to have to accept. Zero exploration, just let's get on with it. Everyone's just, worldwide, everyone's like, well, okay, yeah, fine. There's been, you know, a massive pandemic. Shit has changed. Yeah, embrace it. If suddenly yeah, totally. episode four looks like an entirely different show, fuck it. That's the way things Ooh. are. Deal with it. At least you don't have to leave your house to watch it, so fucking shut up. Exactly. Exactly. Well, and uh, yeah, yeah, so I'll keep everyone updated on that. Cool, cool. I reckon we'll still, be, we'll still be here recording in August. Not working, uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, I, 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 I keep having vague hopes about, because I have my next kind of wedding, so I haven't uh, rescheduled in, oct- in October. <clears throat> so I kind of sometimes, ah, oh, it could happen. And then other times, like, no, I don't think that sounds very good. And I'm kind of like, you, yeah, I'm fucking terrified about going back to it. Because, yeah. I'd be so, it's, well, it's, I mean, the first one is going to be fucking nerve wracking. How does this work? What's going on? Because I've not really picked up other than to make a fairly ridiculous music video. I've not really picked up a camera. <laughs> Uh, it was a fun music video. I enjoyed you it. Post, you should, you should uh, post a link somewhere. I'll do that. I must have got thing. the Facebook page or something. Um, yeah, that'd be that way inclined. Um, yeah. It turned out, it, turned out really, well, it was. It started off really simply. I thought, well, it was just like some sort of weird lockdown video. And then I sort of thought, well, maybe, maybe we need a backstory to, or something. It's like, you don't, John. But that was too late. I was already, I was gone by that point. Um, so it was meant to, what was meant to be like a really simple thing with just like three performances filmed on smartphones from each person's house at one point i was like editing nine layers of video i was like what the fuck has happened here what the fuck is this? Uh, but you know it's it was fun and i think it's turned out pretty cool so um so yeah, yeah it's great i like it we had, yeah actually the producer of um um bands like the, the wild hearts and television get in contact with us to um, nice, yeah. Yeah. interesting, interesting times ahead. Maybe for a bunch Happy of days, fun men that are totally. far too old to start a band. <laughs> oh, I'd <laughs> fucking love it if you guys had to go and do it again. Oh, it'd be horrendous. Imagine that. Absolutely fucking knackered. <laughs> Just like, how long is your set? Uh, Twenty-five minutes. So sorry, twenty-five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, the sport band's Jesus. on for forty-five minutes. You, you get your money's worth in some way or other. Oh God! Can you imagine it? Oh, Abs- God, absolutely horrendous. Um, oh. Fuck it! In, be- in bed before showtime. <laughs> <laughs> totally. What time? What time? Showtime. Half nine. Uh, oh, well, sorry, we can't. We can't. We can't do half nine. We can't do that. Be Should, I tell you what? We'll, we'll do the support <laughs> slot, and then like the support guys can just go on after us. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Jesus. Yeah, crazy oh, times. Man. Anyway, should we batter on Madness. with this? I, yeah. We should batter yeah. on. And, I should, I'll, um, I'll have to explain myself yeah. at some point here, I think. But Interesting interesting episode this week. Possibly. Will it be an interesting episode? We can't oh, tell yet. We just can't we, tell. Well, who knows? Who, just keep, if you've made it this far, you might as well listen to <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, so <laughs> last episode, we watched and discussed uh, House. Mm-hmm. Uh, House, which was produced by Sean Cunningham. Yes. Of uh, Friday the 13th fame. What did Sean Cunningham do in many years before Friday the 13th? Bad things. He produced a little film with an unknown, our first time director called Wes Craven, Mm -hmm. called The Last House on the Left. Yes. Uh, So that is the link. Uh, We are using Sean Cunningham to get to Wes Craven's The Last House on the Left. But... We are going to mix it up a bit. Yeah. Unusually for us. <laughs> we're all doing Last House on the Left from 1972, but we're also doing, at the same time, yeah. and I'm not sure how this is going to work because we've not discussed it, <laughs> we're also doing the Last House on the Left 2009. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yep, yep. That sounds about right, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> which is a direct, yeah, a direct remake. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, it did seem like a good idea at the time until I had to watch both of them back to back. Yeah, I, I, I didn't watch them back to back. I split them up. But I, I, I almost I did. I, I watched the um, first one last week, and then my plan was to watch uh, FVW, which I, I did manage that. Um, and then I was going to yes, watch, VFW. Yeah, and then I was going to watch 
so, I can't remember what it was. Oh, you went on a you were on a mission. I was on a bit of a bender. I was going to watch The Invisible Man, but the I just couldn't get it to work properly. And so my only backup choice was the fucking remake of Last House on the Left. I was like, all right, fuck it. So it wasn't exact quite back to back, but it was it was as close as you'd want to be, I would imagine. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Um, so yeah, two um, utterly horrendous films. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> back to back. So um, uh, what I hmm. thought I might do actually is. Um, well, I start off. Well, I do. I, I'm gonna. I've actually had a look yet to see, but I always do letterboxed. What does letterbox have to say? Yeah, yeah. Let's are, do. are we gonna split the two films up, <clears> or are we gonna mix them up? Um, we talk about one, then talk about the other, or are we just let's oh, talk. Just let's just make it brief. We'll talk about the one separately, we'll and then just we'll kind talk. of maybe discuss what we think is better yeah. or worse or whatever. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, what I'll do is I'll use the letterboxed. Let's see. I mean, uh, letterboxed, as we know, sometimes it's well off with these things. Uh, but we're committed. With the synopsis. And we've got no idea where these synopses come from, do we? No. We don't check no, them beforehand. We just blurt them No, out. we don't check them at all. So it's me just going to just now. I've just clicked onto the page. <laughs> Last House on the Left, 1972, directed by Wes Craven. Do you know where's the shot for Wesley? Uh, never actually looked <clears> into it. Yeah, that makes sense. I might actually just have a wee look at that and see. Where's don't don't Wesley distract yourself. So, so you you read the thing. I'll look Wesley at Wesley Errol Craven. Oh, lovely! He sounds oh. like a, quite a gent. <laughs> he does, doesn't he? <laughs> doesn't sound like a nasty bugger at all. <laughs> right here we go. Last house on the left, nineteen seventy-two, directed by Wes Craven. Tagline: It rests on thirteen acres of earth over the very centre of hell. Wow. That's from the poster. Quite a famous poster this had anyway. We'll mm. get into that anyway later. Um, a disturbed gang of youths kidnap, torture, and murder two teenage girls. Unbeknownst to the gang, the parents of one of the girls live nearby. I mean... Is that it? That's it. Jesus <clears throat> Christ. It's pretty open-ended, isn't it? I mean, it's a bit of a struggle calling the gang youths. Yeah. Yeah, they look, you know, yeah, they look like... Although... <sighs> Definitely adults I mean, to me. It's hard to tell in that age and behind that thick layer of grain, fucking anything could be going on. That's true. That's very true. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely. I, I mean, I wonder if the uh, I wonder if the the remake has a do it. Let's do it. Come on. The remake. Here we go. Uh, the tagline for this one is: If someone hurt, if someone hurts someone you love, how far would you go to get revenge? Twenty miles. <sighs> 500 miles and uh, we'd walk 500 miles no, and even, 500 miles more even the proclaimers haven't miles? actually done that haven't they no. they've never walked that far have no. they no to- I wonder what a film a Scottish revenge movie like a vigilante revenge movie featuring the proclaimers would be like <laughs> fucking ridiculous that, yeah totally <laughs> totally better fucking are they not are they, are they from Leith or are they from Fife I think they're from Fife um right? Fucking, they might be hard nuts. I can't remember. They were they were born in one or the other and have lived in both. I can't remember which. But. Right, okay. So the tag, uh, so the synopsis for Last House on the Left is nine, directed by Dennis. What? Liadis. Y- Le- yeah, that'll do. Dennis Liadis. Perfect. Bobby Liadis, oh, great. A group of teenage girls heading into the city hook up with a gang of drug-addled ne'er-do-wells and are brutally murdered. The killers find their way to the home of one of their victim's parents, where both father and mother exact a horrible revenge. Well, that's problems with that already. It, well, yeah, they're not heading to the fucking city, are they? No, there's not a group of them. It's two of them. Yeah, there's two. Yeah. And, wh- and one of them survives. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking, fucking terrible synopsis. Get a grip, fucking letterbox. <laughs> that is... Jesus Christ. Look. We might have to stop using this. It's a catastrophe. <laughs> but I do enjoy it, though. Oh, I think it's fair. great fun. Yeah, and I love fair. Letterboxd. I do think it's great. But do you know what? Fucked if they're getting me to pay for a premium account. A friend of the podcast, Mitch, he's got a premium account. What happens with that? I think you just don't get ads, but there's not really ads on it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch is just that much of a purist. That he- it means you can, like copy lists or something oh, fuck oh, I don't know again one of these things that I've been using it for fucking years and I've actually never really looked into really what you can do with it at all yeah it's the way really. forward at any point don't ever look too so. deep into these things you spend your rest of the life doing shit like that exactly imagine exactly. you actually looked into the functions your smartphone had fucking you'd be there for forever 
Oh, Jesus, no, no. Well, it, it makes one call, it's fine, doesn't it? I barely, I I barely even do that. Fun. Fucking play games in it. <laughs> yeah, I That's a very brilliant. rarely phone anybody, actually. Don't like using the phone. Um, so, last season on the left. Yes. Uh, let's start, uh, as always, with uh, our history with the film. Now, hmm. I think it's safe to say that last season on the left has a... The original, certainly, mm-hmm. has a <clears throat> very l- sort of... Uh, long-running uh, so, source of notoriety, really. Without question, especially here in the a, UK. Yeah, yeah. Especially here in the UK. Well, a very famous uh, video nasty, one of, the, one of the sort of main video nasties. Um, wasn't available on video when we were kids. Uh, in fact, wasn't actually available uncut in the UK until 2008, um, eventually, well, until until it sneaked through in the videos. If you if you were lucky enough to be uh, before they all got snatched away. Um, oh, did was it one of those ones? Yeah, I they they, they got at least they were like, "Hi on." <laughs> oh, classic! Because it was it was, it was, it was yeah, it was refused a certificate for the cinema, um, and then that was that was kind of the crux with the when VHS came in. It was like there was no regulations, so it was like no one yeah, could yeah. say you can't put that out. So they were just like just. Put this out, see what happens. Maybe yeah, I'm just gonna batter it. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so I mean, it was it was on the DPP list. I mean, the you know, Video Ratings Act came in 1984. Everything then had to be rated. BBC that's uh, rate that's stuff. double penetration for pensioners. DPP. In case you were wondering, <laughs> Director of Public Prosecutions. Ah, so, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yes. Different website. Lovely. Uh, Yep, the DPP 39 was the list of films that were uh, successfully prosecuted and uh, were the official video nasty. So there was a longer list of suspect films as well. Um, so, yeah, and again, like at the time, the video, you know, the video companies did themselves no favours. They went as lurid as they could with oh, the yeah. box art and yeah, all the rest. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think uh, last season left in the UK did have the, you know, it's got the famous tagline, you know, uh, to avoid fainting, keep repeating, it's only a movie, it's only a movie. And I'm pretty sure that the early version that came out on video over here just had the black sleeve with that on the front. Yeah. Which must have stood out, you know, pretty well on the shelf, I guess. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I... Certainly never had an original copy of it at all. Um, I no. was always uh, from when we were, I mean, we were, oh, when did we become interested in this sort of thing? Well, sort too of, young, I guess. Uh, to, sort of 10, 11, 12 ish. 12, maybe, maybe 12, 12, 12, I guess. Yeah. 12, something like that. Um, and I was thinking back on it actually. Now, I, 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 did have a copy on VHS, but I didn't have an original copy on VHS. I never picked up a. It's quite a, quite a rare tape that. Um, I did have a very good bootleg of it though. Yeah. Um, and which had a full color sleeve, which makes me think it was a Spike film. Yep, that sounds. Yep, <clears throat> he was quite quite uh, involved. Spike out of a uh, you know out of the several sort of uh, sources that we we discovered of. Um, of uh, bootleg videos at the time. Yep. Um, Spike was the most professional out of the lot, <clears> I would <throat> say. Which is troubling for a man called Spike, but there you go. Yeah. Tis the truth. Right. Tis the truth. <laughs> um, so I, de- I definitely did have it on tape. Um, I weirdly, um, I think I'll never watch it once. Yeah. I don't I, remember I, ever watching it once. I don't... I, it's, it's one of those films where... I mean... I, I, uh, wow, I, I just don't know what mood you would need to be in to say, tell you what, let's fire on Last House on the Left. Yeah, totally. After seeing it, I think you're, you're, you're for me, it's like, you're kind of done. It was fair enough watching it uh, here again now, because a huge amount of time has passed since I last watched it. Um, so I, exactly the same for me, actually. Yeah, so I was kind of vaguely interested to check it out again. Um, bit of trepidation as well, because I do remember, I just remember it being fairly horrible and it is pretty fucking horrible uh, yeah, yeah no question about it um but yeah wow <laughs> it's a bit of a different experience watching it on blu-ray than watching it on like a vhs shonky vhs like vhs are you saying that is it is it much different <laughs> it's not massively different at least you can actually see what's going on yeah that's true that's true roughly like you kind of forget that, like, sort of, you know, watching 
watching stuff on our cathode TV at like, what was it, 240p? Yeah, um, yep. Yep. Uh, like basically, if you, a, a lot of this film is just set, is filmed in the woods, mm-hmm. and basically woods just become like the ground is brown, and then <laughs> there's just a smear of green. <laughs> you can't really see what's going on. Yeah, this is very true. The thing is, though, I mean, the thing is with a lot of these nasties, uh, a lot of the video nasties, seeing them in that way, seeing them in bootleg tapes, ropey duplicates made them worse than they were. I, I, you're totally right. I think, you know, sort of probably the absolute pinnacle being guinea pig. I think that was the... Because that was, you know, VHS, ropey, and Jeez. just like, yeah, that's actually at our age, believably a snuff film. Yes, totally. But before we actually... I mean, I guess it was only after reading... Killing for culture, really. That like I sort of clicked about the uh, fact that it's edited. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. It's like you just don't think about it at the time when you're that young. Oh, well, you don't, do you? Because you're so aghast. <laughs> I mean, fucking Charlie Sheen thought it was a snuff film, but yeah, and also it, that was maybe a sort of fourth or fifth generation dupe as well. Yeah, I would it say, is and it sort of f- edged between color and black and white at points, quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that that yeah, that really heightened the. Yeah, if you get something like that with that kind of copy, then yeah, it looks ropey as fuck without question. And yeah, as yeah, you say, yeah, I think it was with all those video nasties that we got back in the day. Um, having them were VHS kind of made them just that bit fucking nasty. A bit exactly, and it, and it was they were completely illicit then as well. Yeah. It was like you know super dodgy, like getting hold of them. People were getting arrested for having tapes or for owning tapes. Yeah, wild. people were getting prosecuted. Wild. Madness. Whereas obviously now most of the video nasties you can actually just get here now. Yep. Most of them are on Blu-ray. Like I mean, I mean shit, fucking. A lot of this stuff's like completely mainstream now. It's ridiculous that mm. it was Ch- ever a video nasty. Change but days. then you you get odd things like this where it's still really fucking grubby. Yeah, I think that is uh, an excellent way to describe the film overall. If we're going to chat about the film, um, it is yeah. just a grubby experience. Um, it is, and you know, kind of made all. I think you know a lot of the cast were you know not professional actors. Um, it was shot fairly run and gun. Um, yeah, you know a lot of shot shooting in places where they had, yeah, lot shooting in places where they had no permission to shoot. So it's just like fucking get it done, get out, um, and that yeah. all kind of adds to yeah, the kind of just a kind of vaguely depraved feel to certainly the first three quarters of the film. Um, really are just yeah, grubby is the best way to describe it without question. Yeah, I mean, the thing that really, the thing that instantly for me as well stood out with this viewing was the very, very, very start of the film features the sort of main girl in the film, Mary, yeah. who's supposed to be, it's her 17th birthday, features her naked in the shower, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which, like... Straight away, it's kind of weird, like watching films from the seventies and stuff, where you get that sort of, you know, sort of they're opening up about nudity, but then you're like, well, this is actually supposed to be someone that's like underage, technically, or not. It wouldn't be in the UK, but would be in the states, sort of thing. That you're just like, oh, oh, this is a bit lecherous already, like totally. um, And then, and it's yeah, I mean. There's something about the cheapness of it that just adds to it, that really sort of cranks up the the disturbing nature of it. I think so. I, I think, think you always find well. that with films like this, you know, that the cheaper it looks, the more kind of visceral and horrible it kind of is because it, it just feels underground and minging and exploitative. Um, which, it does, which is, if, and this film is all of those things, there's no question about it. And, which, well, and on purpose. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I was having a lot of flick through the... Uh, we'll get to the actual edition that we watched uh, recently. Uh, we watched uh, later on, but um, it comes with a little book, with a, um, a little sort of uh, uh, essay, I guess, by uh, Stephen Thrower. Yep. Um, and I just sort of started uh, thumbing through the start of that before we came on. And um, 
Yeah, I mean, you know, they're quite open about, uh, you know, uh, Sean Cunningham had, uh, and Wes Craven had shot a, a softcore sex film and uh, the company they shot it for came to him and said, oh, we want something really violent. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's, I mean, this is like, you know, the time, like properly, you know, cinema just having a complete fucking meltdown in the states and stuff just becoming transgressive and boundary pushing yeah for the sake of it i mean 1972 i mean you've got you've just got stuff coming out left right and center like you know straw dogs and clockwork orange you've got like fucking uh what's the porn film called deep throat Deep-throat, and stuff yeah. like that coming out as well you've just got all this like sort of mad situation where like, uh, you know, all the boundaries are being pushed at the same time and the sort of, you know, the, the old guard is sort of starting to crumble. And, um, yeah, I mean, then you get something like this, which, like, well, you know, Wes Craven and Sean Curriam are, like, you know, very open about, like, you know, we, we, we wanted to push boundaries. We wanted yeah, to, yeah, like, yeah. you know, Vietnam war footage was being shown on TV at home and we, we just wanted to sort of, like, make something as horrible and grubby and realistic and violent as possible just to sort of shock people i guess and you know see what the reaction was i mean the, the funny thing is i mean it's still really shocking now but it's actually mm. not as it's not gra- particularly graphic no no that's true um and actually quite a lot of the reviews you read online but like contemporary reviews by you know viewers like you know if you go into letterboxd and you know other people watching it modern audiences like the young young folk now are just like you know what the fuck's this shit do you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, totally. it's not, you know and it's, it's something that we'll get you know we'll get to when we get to the remake i mean the remake is uh i guess significantly more violent yeah at the end i mean well the, i mean the violence is the same there's still like you know rape and murder and all the rest it's just it's more graphic and gory and the the sort of you know the updated version i mean they're both equally disturbing i would say like both equally horrible but yeah yep, um, i'd say so i mean there's something i mean i guess the what the 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 original one is like super dated i mean but it's an old film now you know what is yeah. it it's like nearly <clears throat> nearly 50 years old that's fucking crazy it's insane Absolutely if you think about crazy. it <laughs> it's older than us It'd be like us sitting thought. in 19 like 1989 watching a film from 1949 <laughs> <laughs> just more violent um yeah no, it's 1939 even sure. wild well, yes jeez I, I don't even know what to say about this film I'm going to be 100% honest um it just kind of flashed past it just flashed past me a lot of the time is the other thing I would say that we'll get to as well I guess is there's there's a significant running time difference between the remake and the original mm-hmm. yep um, the original is what just over eighty minutes, I think. Yeah, it's a short beast. It does fairly lick along, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you get caught up in the absolute horror and terror, and before you know it, you're finished. <laughs> there's like definitely, you know, a definite sort of three act structure, isn't there? You know, the girls go out, it's all happy, they're all going for their night out. Then it's shit. I mean, fucking shit goes south pretty fucking quickly as well. It does doesn't very it? quickly, like super quick. Jesus, bad luck. <laughs> the first person they ask for fucking for a bit of weed and then oh, oh dearie me dearie me and then I yeah obviously then oh, there's all the, all the I mean it just feels horribly realistically nasty yeah I think that the be- actual like sort of you can imagine that sort of bullying horrible you can yeah. I think you can actually you can really can really imagine feel imagine real crime yeah it, I think you know certainly when they get back to when they're looking for the weed and they get back to that room with Krug and all the all his cohorts, it's like that is it's a really troubling scene. I mean, you really feel like they're in real fucking peril, like immediately, absolutely. Immediately. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's super uncomfortable. That's that leads to an incredibly uncomfortable period of time watching that film, as it slowly, yeah. slowly builds to the inevitable fucking horrendousness. Um. But it's yeah, it's just so effective, and uh, yes, and the, yeah, the shoddiness of the general look of it really helps in that way. Um, it looks shoddy, it looks cheap. It's, I have to say, it's but fairly poorly acted as well, as you would expect, I guess. Yeah, 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 totally. And I mean, like in particular, uh, like uh, Mary's mum and dad at the start, like the dad, 
Like that whole sequence at the start before she goes out when she's been to her mum and dad is just some sort of like parody of like hippie talk with her like, you know, <laughs> winding up her parents or like, do you know what I mean? About bras and stuff, yeah. Oh, totally. And her dad just being like proper, it's just so weird, oddly staged as well. Yeah. With her dad just sitting in the chair the whole time, like sort of traditional stereotypical father of the house sort of thing. Like it's just fucking weird. Like it is totally it's odd. not it's not very well made at all. No, it's not. I mean, I, th- I think, but it's one of those, just looking at it now, but it, got all that kind it, of stuff going into it. And it's almost how I expect, if someone set out to make a snuff movie with a structure, this is what I think it would look like. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. I mean, the thing is, it's it's interesting as a sort of, especially seeing what Wes Craven went on to, to become, mm-hmm. you know, one of the most successful horror directors of, like the 20th century and beyond. Um, it's really interesting seeing it from that perspective. Like, it, it's intri- like the, the, the sort of, um, yeah, it's interesting watching it as a first film with someone as well with all its flaws and all the rest. But I mean, it, that doesn't stop it from from being effective oh, yeah, at all. Totally. Like, you know. I think, I think um, in a way its flaws make it more effective. You know, I just, that's the kind of way I look at it. Uh, what's your take on? I mean, obviously, like most of the cast didn't really go on to do anything else at all, really. But uh, obviously, David Hess did. He went on to make some even nastier films than this. Yeah, oddly enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> holy a, shit. Usually, man. usually, you kind of I start know. there and kind of uh, you grab, you know, sort of go away from it. Yeah, totally. As you become sort of more famous, you sort of yeah, you sort of gravitate back into sort of more mainstream stuff. Maybe you know a bit like comedy or something like that. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, you fucking ended up making the uh, the house on the edge of the park, which is man, yeah, which is very nasty. Hell. film. that is kind of set up as a snuff film, which is really I quite minging. was really honestly thinking we might have to do that film at some point. We might have to get into. Uh, is that is that is that can, can you get that? Well, it's say so you no. Know, We'd have to import it from the states. Yeah, I can't do that. No, sorry. My, uh, <laughs> um, I think uh, is so. It used to be when it was first passed over here. After, like you know, after Furman's death, I think it was cut by eleven and a half minutes or Holy something like that. Shit! I think it's down. I mean, I think it's down to seconds that is cut by, but it's still cut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, over here. Um, just with some, yeah, very, very, very sexualized rape sequences. Woofed. Different times. <laughs> Different times. Um, now, talking about David Hess, um, what did, he also did the soundtrack. Now, what do you he, make? I, I actually really love the soundtrack. It's it's a weird I mean, it, fucking. It's, it doesn't. It shouldn't be in that film, but I really fucking love it. It's it's kind of. You know, as as a as a man who a likes sort of wonky folk music, and b is a man who likes prog in his folk music, you couldn't really go wrong with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the uh, the there are some like fairly stinking <laughs> um, twee folk stuff in it, but mm-hmm. there's some really out there stuff in it as well. There is, like, yeah. Really wigged out. I'm, I'm actually so glad that I managed to get that edition that we got because I, I will listen to that CD there's no question about it yeah yeah totally totally I mean some of the electronic stuff in it is utterly wigged out totally I, I utterly, like how it just flits between out. those two things like oh, right this is fair enough <laughs> yeah totally it is very very uh, like disconcerting in points well yeah so it's, it's absolutely weird. over the shop you don't know what's going to happen with the next and yeah I mean, I, man that CD is going to be a hell of a ride there's no question about it you could have that in the car are you uh, yeah we're all going down to see uh <laughs> Uh, Rachel's parents, so kids down, visit the grandparents in a couple of weeks' time. Fire that in the nice old, fire that in the player. Wonderful, brilliant, absolutely wonderful. Effort. Yeah, nice, nice, <laughs> brilliant. Uh, just checking it out. House in the Park now cut by forty-two seconds. Okay, that's, that's still seconds. pretty hefty. Yeah, I think it was released by. Shameless over here, though. Oh, God, okay. You're not gonna. We're not gonna want to watch. I, I don't want to give them any money. I don't think. No, no. I find them a bit. Be conf- a I find them a bit confusing. Probably. Bit confusing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're all right, but yeah, they just have flaws that they just won't sort. So it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, some brief chat in the little synopsis here before we came into this about the being a gang of youths. Uh, mm-hmm. David Hess. 
I, I don't know how old he actually is. You probably check and see. How they old all look like certainly, adults. Certainly his twenties. Yeah, but his other the other guy looks the about guy thirty five. Exactly. He's like a fucking old boy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's it, 35. God, talk about old boy. That makes us practically dead. Jesus. And what do you... Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, the film does go fairly tonto towards the end. Yeah. It does It does get a bit fucking wild. It, does, it kind of goes almost a bit too mental, I think, when the... Um, Look at the fucking chainsaw comes out and stuff. Like, it's just, it's, a booby trap in the house yeah, and all this. Yeah, it's, it's just gone a bit... <laughs> they've really lost the plot of this altogether um, yeah which you know in a way I think the, the, the remake does a lot better when it comes to that section of the film um, yeah it just becomes sort of like and then fucking the bumbling cops the bumbling cops man I mean oh, oh. honestly a conscience about this film it's a pair of bumbling cops. It's fucking insane because you kind of lurch from horrific, torturous rape scene to bing, comedy bumbling cops. And you're like, <laughs> right. And so it's tonally, it's fucking all over the place at times. Yeah, um, totally. And, Jesus. you know, the, the comedy isn't funny at all. Um, no. Mainly because you're just so scarred from the shit you've seen a second ago. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's just uh, odd. And. Oh, man, what 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 do you make of the violence in this film? It's. it's kind of, do you mean towards the end for me? It was just like it's just kind of gone a bit fucking Looney Tunes. Uh, yeah, I mean, by the time they, we've got the chainsaw and all the rest coming out, it's just all a bit all a bit much. I think really, it's um, the uh, guy getting his booby bitten off. Uh, you felt that one by that question is uh, quite sort of uh, quite I spit your grave sort of thing as well <laughs> like uh, obviously different debobbing <laughs> method in that film but yeah um, but yeah I mean like I said it is weirdly like weirdly t- the actual violence is weirdly tame but the whole threat of violence and the whole mm. everything's just fucking grim yeah I think it comes down to like kind of the general amateurism of the whole thing um, that's what really adds to it it's not so much the the violence or the way it's acted out it's, it's the people who are doing it and the, they just seem like people who are being filmed are doing stuff to somebody because uh, yeah. <clears throat> this you know the acting prowess is just kind of not there at all so it just kind of <laughs> borderline sort of multi-take documentary of points. Um, so yeah, it's an extremely uncomfortable watch and yeah, you know, they s- achieved what they set out to achieve. There's absolutely no question about that. Um, is it a film yeah, I'll definitely. ever return to? Probably not, I don't think. Yeah. The thing is, I I mean, I, I, well, I, I'll, probably, I'll probably rip the CD and then we'll put it onto eBay. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? That's a because it is a is a nice addition which we will get to. We will yes, get to. Um, and yeah, so just just looking at it there, so like David Hess and the guy, the other guy, um, who it turns out, I'm just looking, he's he was uh, basically a porn actor. This is his only non porn role. All right. Um, they were both, uh, they're both the same age. They were both. Um, what were they? They were both 36. Wow. At Holy the time. shit. <laughs> All right. Letterboxd. So, yeah, fucking out. not really, not really youths, really. No, they look, they look way but, old. Yeah, they're just like crazy cunts. Yeah. Um, I mean, quite, uh, they do, I mean, say, yeah, that, that, I mean, and they are, they are obviously supposed to be sort of young, you know, younger than they are in the film. Yeah. But they do come across as quite an effectively sinister criminal gang, really. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean... You know, they come across as like a really a sort despicable of, uh, bunch of individuals. Yeah, basically. And all that stuff when they actually pitch up at the house before they realise that it's Mary's folks house is, like, great as well. Yeah. That sort of tension in there, especially with them being, like, total roughnecks. And like her, like the girl, like absolutely knocking back the wine, like gulping it down. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, Lots you of know, nice touches you know, like that. You know, that's but, the yeah. great effect in this film. Of, like, you know, certainly, like both versions of the film is that little twist. And it is a nice little twist. It is good. Um, yeah. And both kind of made it down in slightly different ways, which is nice. Um, it feels it feels a bit more far-fetched in the original that they end up at their house. Uh, a touch, yeah. Because they've come out of the centre of New York. <laughs> <laughs> true yep yep and end up in in the middle of the woods <laughs> at their house <laughs> seems that, a bit fanciful that is true there you go I suspect well, spinning my disbelief 
Um, Taking that as a starting point, then, what do you think about the actual... What do you think about the remake and the differences in the remake? I mean, the thing is, so, well, again, uh, history-wise, I'd never actually seen it. This was the first time watching it. You had seen it before, hadn't you? It was in the the classic Um, blockbuster five for seven quid for two years, whatever it was. Oh, back in the day, yes, 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 the old... Yep. Um, I... The thing that I... I was amazed at is um, how uh, faithful an adaptation it is. Yep, overall, yep, yep. In terms of, like, everything's there pretty much. Um, But uh, how completely different a movie it is. Yeah, it's a hugely different feel altogether. I mean, I mean, you know, time has passed and there's some money and there's also people who can act in it, which makes a fairly stunning difference to the whole proceedings. Um, yeah, so, well, the other big difference is, like, how um, even a low-budget film nowadays looks so much slicker. Yeah, well, that's it. Well, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I can't remember what the budget in this was. I, I, I think I did look at it earlier, but I've forgotten it. <laughs> um but yeah, I think it's a sign of fifteen million. Yeah, sign fifteen million budget. That's actually pretty high. It's higher than I thought it would be. Yeah, yeah, totally, um, totally for the remake. Uh, original being eighty-seven thousand dollars. Yep, woofed. Um, I think there I think the remake so far. Well, it was, uh, well the last figure I saw, it's uh, done fifty million dollars. Right, That's fucking hell, there pretty you go. wild. Uh, that's with like um blue physical sales and everything after that um yeah yeah i mean i certainly remembered enjoying the film um thinking it was a good film and my opinion hasn't shifted drastically from that i think it generally is a pretty decent film um acting wise you know it's it's leaps and bounds up up, um beyond the original um yeah I, i like I think I like pretty much all the actors in it. There's, there's no one that really lets it down. It really comes across as a, as, as far as the acting goes, it is fucking A1, especially for a film with that kind of budget. Um, yeah. And I can't, they've made like kind of subtle changes in it. Um, I'm going to forget the names, um, but the kind of, the, the quieter kid that's in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I was trying to remember this, but obviously that was. It's his son and his Krug son in this one. That's right, yeah, and he's like, a, I think he's he's fucking great in this, like as an actor. I really, yeah, really, really enjoy him. Off. Um, to be in that kind of a situation of a group of complete bastards, but he has a morality. Um, yeah, it's an interesting change that because in the original one, he's a heroin addict. Yeah, that Krug is. I think he's still Krug's son in the original, but he's got his own son hooked just on there, heroin dependent to so, control yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. in this one, it's just uh, yeah, there's none of that going on. It's, it's, that uh, angle's totally gone because that that that's in the original one. You've got that whole him like um, going through withdrawal symptoms and all that. Oh yeah, this, in this, so him being sick in the original one is because he's going through withdrawal symptoms, but in, him being sick in the remake is because he's so nervous when he sees that. Yeah, basically they've killed Mary and they've turned up at Mary's house. Yeah, he sees the the photo over in the fridge and he's like, "Oh!" Yeah, it just seems like a sort of you know extremely unwilling accomplice to the the entire thing. Yeah, um, yeah. and you know, yes, obviously he chances across the the two girls and it's quite a nice scene because he often he's like, "Oh, they found some people who will actually talk to me and be reasonable to me," and then the whole situation is absolutely fucked by the rest of the by well, Krug turning up and and the rest and. Uh, Similar to the original, all hell ensues after that. Um, yep. A pretty similar fate, although the absolutely key is, you know, they don't kill, well, they think they've killed both, both the girls, but one survives. Um, yes. Which is probably one of the, but weird, it's like a quite of a big difference in it, but it doesn't really seem to have a great bearing on the story so much, or what actually happens in the end. Um Yeah, I mean, I guess like in the original, Mary, they do kill Mary. But, I mean, I guess it just gives it a slightly happier ending, really, doesn't it? Yeah, I think I think it gives it's it... still not I think a very it, happy ending. No, but I think it gives a far better balance to the film. Um, I mean, you've still... I mean, she still goes through absolute fucking hell. There's no question about it. Um, yeah. But for me, I much preferred the fact that she has survived it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Just because it... 
because again, you know, there, there is a hefty rape sequence in this film, and it is oh, re- horrendous, really horrible, um, really horrible. Um, ugh, close-ups of faces, <laughs> um, really nasty to watch. Um, so I think from that point of view, I was glad that she didn't just get fucking tossed into river and never appeared again. Um, yeah, I think that, that would have been. I mean, the the rape scene was so cruel that to have that on top of it would have been just like unbearable. To be honest, yeah, totally unbearable. I mean, it, is, I mean it, it really it does it does crank it up a notch significantly. The whole, uh, I think, just the way it's shot. You know, because I mean, obviously the first one kind of relies on fairly static shots, and there's but this one, you know, you've got much more going. I've got more cuts. You've got more. We just, we just got more of a film, to be fair. Um, yeah. And so they've kind of really, I think that rape scene is particularly bad with the various cuts in it. And, um, you know, you've got close ups of faces, you've got vague close ups of where things might be happening. Yeah. Uh, it's just all a bit fucking minging. And I think to have her actually just be dead at the end of all that would have been like, ugh. I think I, yeah. I, think I might have lost a bit of faith in the film at that point. Um, because overall, I it's, think all, it's, it's a it's a good it's a well made film. We can't really argue. But, I mean, no. As as far as the film goes, it is well made. It's well acted. Um, I'm not saying it's a fucking classic film or anything, but no, no. Uh, no. If you if you're gonna ask me which one do you want to watch, I'd, I'd choose this one. It's, I mean, uh, the funny thing with it is that it's um, I think it's. Yeah, I mean, it's funny seeing it being such so similar and so different at the same time. But I think the thing with for me is that I think it's maybe a little bit too long. Yeah, pushing two hours. I think. Yeah, yeah, pushing two hours, which is unnecessary. It kind of drags a little bit in places. But the sort of the sort of increased ability of the actors means that lots of the sort of sequences that are sort of drawn out for tension actually work a lot they better. They do. I th- you're right. I think if you stuck an extra, you know, half hour on the original, it would be a fucking oh, horrend- God, horrendous it's interminable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and I, th- I think that the fight back as well, at the end, when Mary's parents uh, fight back, it's, it's a lot less Looney Tunes, like you said, yeah. you know, from the first one. It's like the, uh, it just, yeah, it's, the first one just becomes a bit, you know, so it's, it's not very believable, their fight back. Yeah. Like, basically, they're like a sort of older, they feel yeah. like an older couple. Like a lot older, like bizarre. Yeah. yeah. And like him coming out with the chainsaw and all the rest is just like, you know, like comedy, really. Yeah. Um, whereas where where the the actual fight back in this is like believable and like flawed as well. Yep. Yep. You know, um, but is um uh, really what uh, does does work a lot better. It is a lot more believable that they would be able to pull that off. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Um and it's Absolutely horrendous. I mean, I think the 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 one thing that really stands out, and like obviously, you know, you know, you made it this far through the episode. If you're listening still, the you know spoilers, uh, obviously, <laughs> is you know probably you don't give a shit. But the one thing that I find absolutely wild is the very end, the very last scene of the the remake, which is just. Utterly bonkers <laughs> with the microwave. Oh yes, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Wha- an exploding head. Yeah, it's, it's a bit far out. <laughs> Wha- what? Where did that come from? I think it's like <laughs> going through the books of ways, the little book of ways to die. It's like, yeah, fuck it, page ninety eight. Let's just try that. Um, yeah, industrial microwave that operates with the door open. Yeah. Uh, and we just put your head in it. Yeah, it doesn't automatically shut down if the door's open. No, 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 no. Just keeps on no, no, going. No, it just goes, keeps going. Oh God, absolute madness. And yet, I mean, the the it's graphic. This film is graphic. Yeah, it is graphic. The, yeah, yeah. It's graphic in a way that the the the, the first one isn't. 
There's quite a long, quite a long build up to this one as well, I guess. I think so. I think they spend more time just There's a bit more character development yeah. really, and there's a bit more time actually, yeah, spending time with them and then Which I think is fair that you know, if you've got if you've got the actors to do it, which they which they did, then yeah, that's fair enough for me. Um if I as you say if we'd been like um the original man, probably just switched off. Um I think I think I kept thinking about uh, while well, I was watching it as well though, with the actors is like the for, first film, the, the original, we are like, okay, they're trying to push boundaries. It's really grubby. There's not a lot of them making it sort of thing. And you, you do have to wonder, you're like, what the fuck? Like, imagine. I always like to wonder, like, what about what Wes Craven's mum thought? <laughs> what about his grand thought? Yeah. I, 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 oh, Wesley's made a film. <laughs> where's, these, where's these new films coming out? It was Last House on the Left. It's, it's, it's a horror film. I wonder if it'll be. Do you remember Dracula? Do you remember those old? Do you remember those? Oh, I think it'll be like that then. No, you might. But so, with yeah. the new one, the remake, I was like, can you imagine being the young cast that are like, this is my first film. This is what I'm going to get my break in. Mm, yeah. It's a remake of Last House on the Left. What? Did what? you phone your mum and go, Oh, I got, I, I got cast in a film. All right, what is it? Oh, it's a remake of an old horror film. All right, well, what is it? Like Dracula, one of those old ones then, is it? Oh, one, of those, one of those old classics. I see the last house in the left. <gasps> oh, Sharp and take a breath. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, it's a funny one to... I mean, I guess, like, stuff's being remade all the time these days. I mean, and it always has done, you know. I mean, Christ, you know, how, well, I've mentioned Dracula twice now. How many times has that film been made? 47 times. Exactly. And that was and that was just in the last year. <laughs> well, I mean, when the... Well, I mean, fuck, when the, when the sort of classic universal version of uh, Dracula was made, well, the book was only 20 years old or something like that. Yeah, you know I mean? Jesus <laughs> Christ. There's been, there's been plenty, plenty. Absolutely, the pinnacle being uh, Danny Rosenta's uh, Dracula 3D, the, the absolute, well, the, the pinnacle of the genre. Possibly the finest Dracula film ever made. In 3D. In, th- <laughs> in Italy. Yep, by Danny Rosenta. <laughs> a terrible film a terrible experience that you forced me to go through <laughs> was it stolen in your great theft in your blu-ray it theft it was as well yeah. unbelievable can you imagine someone buying or you imagine getting home oh well, there's a 3D one here let's find up that 3D telly that we nicked <laughs> somewhere else let's give let's give this a watch if I was wanting to check out 3D honking absolutely, absolutely honking. brutal <laughs> Um, <clears throat> yes, where were we? <laughs> uh, yeah, so remake uh, it does what it says in the tin, I guess. It does. I mean, I um, I kind of put it alongside the remake of I Spit in Your Grave. Yes, it sits very closely to that with me because um, it does. Uh, the remake of I Spit in Your Grave, I actually also really quite liked. Um, there is, I've not watched. I've not what uh, you recommended it to me a few years ago. I think. Well, I think again, it's what I, it is yet again one of those <clears throat> blockbuster numbers. Just fucking pick up. Seems like, and I was actually taken aback. I mean, it is really horrible. It's fucking horrible. Yeah, it's really horrible. Uh, but it's got some amazingly inventive kills in it, which just like, like, oh, this is pretty cool. Um, but again, it has yep, the rape scene is there, not nearly as lengthy, thank Christ, but. Um, uh, but yeah, just the, the the revenge taken afterwards is fucking superlative, and uh, yeah. Um, so I, again, so it's one of those one of those two films. Like, oh, I remember those as kind of like classic shockers back in the day that have been treated pretty well in remakes, actually. Um, yeah, and actually, in, in some ways, given a, a hell of an upgrade. Um, I mean, I, I guess the thing that's like. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we kind of sought out lots of this stuff because it was like, you know, like super illicit. rare and like <laughs> illicit. And it was, you know, I mean, I guess like young folk today probably just don't have that. Do you know what I mean? And like I said, you know, we're talking about films that are nearly 50 years old now. I mean, yeah. the, the allure of this for someone that's, you know, a teenager now or in their 20s 
it's probably pretty fucking limited. Do you but know what I mean? Like, so, just look at whatever's I mean, made and fucking chuck it out the window at a moment. <laughs> no, exactly. Like, I, I mean, it's... It's... That, I think these uh, remakes are, you know, like, are just bringing films to an audience that, you know, pe- I mean, the audience isn't, a lot of the audience isn't going to go back and find these old old films. And no. if they did go back to it, they'd probably be like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, it's I mean, yeah, I mean, in the extreme. But they're not marketed to say, oh, look, here's a remake of this. Go and check out the original. They're just marketed as a new film. So if you didn't know about it, you wouldn't. That is a very good point, yeah, actually. That is a very, very good point. It's a very good point. There's no... And especially people nowadays are just sitting flicking through Netflix or whatever. Yeah. Uh, we, we, well, both of us watched uh, last the, the, the remake on Netflix. Yep. It's sitting there on Netflix. Free if you pay your subscription. So, yeah, I mean, why, you know, you're flicking through the horror section. Oh, there you go. Last season left. Let's give that a watch. Yep. Uh, you would, you would you'd have, you'd you'd have no idea, but it didn't mention a remake in the synopsis of it. It's just um, this is no. a film. Yep. Um, are we going to? Oh, are we going to? We're going to rate these. Give a rate. Yes, I tell you what. Let's rate it, and then we'll get our new feature going. What's our new feature? Have you told me about it? Anyway, I think we've done it twice now. Oh, have we? Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right, um, quite a hard one. This. Mm-hmm. What are you going to rate it out? Uh, of? We going thumbs. The original. Uh, neither of them are very enjoyable experience. No. <laughs> um, both very effective mm-hmm. at what they do, uh, which is try and be horrible and um, present a horrible situation. Um, I think my. Tolerance for this kind of like horribleness is like probably diminished a little bit as I get older. Yep. I'm just like, oh, Jesus Christ. I kind of like, I probably like my horror to be a little bit less grimy these days. Although that said, I'm still a big fan of Combat Shock. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, am I going to go back to either of these films? Probably not. Fair. Can't imagine a situation where I'd be like, like you said, I just can't imagine the situation. Although I enjoyed watching both of them, I can't imagine a situation where I sit down and I'm like, oh, what am I going to watch tonight? It's just not happening. I'm just going to put on Last Season Left. Either one of them. I, j- I just cannot imagine putting them on again. I I struggle to imagine these being anyone's favourite films. Yeah, God almighty. Yeah, totally. Um, I think that um, the first one, as a sort of historical artifact is like you know important and interesting yeah um but is it very is it good no (laughs) (laughs) is it shocking yes yes and that's what it's set out to do um it uh yeah i'm gonna I'm going to give them. I'm going to give them both two thumbs across. Oh, okay. I can't say that they're bad. I can't say that they're good. And they're both interesting for different reasons. Yeah. Um. If you're sort of interested in the history of exploitation films at all, then I'd thoroughly recommend that you watch the original one. Yep. Uh, Arrow has a, we'll talk about the edition that we've watched just now, but Arrow has a standard edition coming out very, very soon of the film. Um, The new one, I would recommend to be, I would recommend people watch as well if they're interested in like modern horror or interested in remakes or, do you know what? I mean, if you're, if you've not seen it before, I would say yes and give it a watch. It's a horrible watch. Uh, it's a watch nonetheless. It's nasty and not very pleasant, but I wouldn't say don't watch it. Um, so yeah, a bit of a weird one. Bit of a sort of f- flatliner for me on both of these. Yeah, really. I think as far as I'm going, I'm going to have to keep my original method of how I go with this. And it's going to seem harsh, but for... They're both exactly the same. I'm going to do two thumbs for both of them. Yeah. Watch it again. Thumbs down. Yep. Film. Thumb across. So that's. 
a thumb down and a thumb across for both films. Yeah, I mean, shit. I mean, it's a, it's a good system you've got going there. I mean, if I deployed you, if I deployed your system, I would Probably be a thumb same, down as yeah, well for yeah, the rewatch. Yeah. But well, I, think, I think it's nice to you know make things even more confusing for us to deploy different systems. Each. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Uh, I mean, it's yeah, it's. Shall we play the game? Yes, let's play the game. Let's play the game. Okay, the original. What we're doing here is we are going to look at the Rotten Tomatoes, or tomatoes, yep. if you will, yeah. score. Let's but we are going to have tom- to tom- guess them first. So the okay. original. What do you reckon the audience... Sorry, well, critic score first and then audience score. Critic score for the original... Drum roll. 40%. 40 for critics? Yeah. Wow. Audience? I'm saying 40% for critics because I, I think that probably it didn't do very well critically. Or did it do critically well? I think it's probably quite low for f- We've got to bear in mind well. it's like uh, the, the scores are taken over the years so it's not just when it came out. Audience, 70. Whoa, 70. Right, okay. So 40 and 70. Uh-huh. Right, okay. Mm. For the original. Okay, I'm going to go... Um, man... I think you're probably quite quite close to the critics, I would guess. You can go the same if you want. Mm, I, I, I'm going to say... Are you going to go lower or say 46. 46? 46. That's oddly specific. I know. <laughs> but I'm just thinking, because uh, no one could have really liked it, surely. 46, an audience score, 72. I've gone mad there. Just gone, for mad. The year. just gone mad. Right, okay. All right. right. Uh, <laughs> let's check it out. It's usually Ron Tomatoes that comes up first, isn't it? Uh, this is exciting. It's very exciting. Oh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, fucking hell. Oh, oh no, oh no. Oh, I've looked all right. Wait, hang on, what? What, oh, what year is it? What year? Oh, I'm looking at. Hang on, sorry. Seventy two. Seventy two. Okay. Oh, he's looked at the original. No, I I didn't actually click. He's looked at the sequel. I didn't click at it. I just I just came up and I was like, oh fuck. Oh, all right, fucking hell. Oh wow. Okay. I'm well off. Uh, critics sixty one percent. So we're both well off with it. Audience score forty four percent. Forty four percent. Yep. Worse than the critics. Never a good sign. Shit. Right. The remake. Uh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Critically, I think I'm going to go... I think it's going to be pretty much the same. I think. I'm going to go I'm going to go on the nose at 60%. Audience. Right. Audience score, I'm going to go... 67. <sighs> Audience, I, I, yeah, okay, right, okay, okay. I'm going to go critic score fifty five. Oh, right, oh, low, low. And audience score seventy. Here we. Go. Ooh. Critics forty two percent. Audience fifty two percent. Shit. Shit, not a well liked film. <laughs> no, shit. Well, I think we both got that pretty fucking fairly wrong, but anyway, go. <laughs> shit. Well, there you go. All right. Well, shall we move there on to a quick sp- spangle of the Blu ray? Because um, I yeah. have not watched anything other than the film. Woo! Blue! It's the Blue Uh, I had a quick flick through some of the stuff, uh, but I mean, we will, we will all go quite quickly through this. So we have both, uh, well, actually there was, a, well, there was a, a, a slight comical balls up <laughs> when uh, we decided on this one. Um, and we decided on it and I went off and I was like, all right, okay, I'm going to buy the film. And I was like, that's weird. It's like, 
on the Arrow website, but says that it's coming soon. And I was like, it's fucking weird. I'm sure it's out. Um, and it transpires that the there's only been a special edition. Arrow do this these days. Yeah. Everything comes out as a special edition first with a little booklet and a few bits and bobs. Usually an extra disc with another cut of the film or whatever. Uh, this is, you know, no different. Um, and uh, the standard edition comes out next August, month or later this month. August. Yeah, yeah August. Um, so then I was like, all right. I, I went on to CEX. I picked up for 22 quid. Uh, this edition of it, um, whereas it was going on eBay for lots of like quite silly money yeah, like, at points, yeah, totally. You know, upwards of fifty quid, some some even higher than that. Yeah. Um, so I was like, oh yeah, I'll snap up for 20, 22 quid. I bought it, and then you were like, oh hold on a second, what's going on with this film? It's not out yet. <laughs> and then we were recording uh, our last time we recorded when we were recording our other podcast, mm-hmm. um, the Drunk Review. Give it a listen. Yep. Like and subscribe or whatever. <laughs> um, the we were bluttered at the end of it, as always. And I went on CEX to buy or to look at the prices for the film that is that we're doing next on that, and um, noticed that CEX had another copy in for twenty two quid still. So you went and bought mm-hmm. that. Yep. Pretty fortuitous stuff, to be honest. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> so so we both picked up a Blu-ray copy of this, 22 quid. And uh, yeah, what a lovely edition it is. Um, it's a nice looking beast, there's no question about it. Come on. Three discer. Cla- classic arrow. Classic, classic arrow. Classic arrow. It's in their uh, sturdy little... New kind of cardboard slippies. Yep. Um, it uh, comes out and then it, inside the cardboard box is a standard uh, Blu-ray uh, case with three discs in it. Um, also a booklet, a 60-page booklet with the one essay throughout with, from Stephen Thrower. Um, it, uh, which is a lovely little booklet, lovely little thing. Um, I'd like Stephen Thrower, so, so, it's, so it's good to have that as the well. The stuff he can chuck is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, have you seen him throwing stuff? Oh, it's honestly. Uh, I mean, I mean th- he gets that comes name. comes from a long line of throwers. Oh, I mean, like, it's, that's, that's it's a, a well-given like, name. I once, exactly. I don't think I once saw him throw a baby into the English Channel from Norfolk. <laughs> Fucking unbelievable. Incredible arm. Incredible <laughs> arm. <laughs> what an arm. <laughs> legend. <laughs> Fucking legend. Um... Comes with a standard reversible sleeve. I yeah, the new artwork's not bad, but I like the original better. Um, flipped over to that. Um, three disc or the three. It also comes with lobby cards, which is oh nice. yeah, I always like. I, I still I always like those. I don't know why. I never make any use. I like of them, a little lobby. No, but I think I mean, if they, I, they are. I had more space in my wall, then I might actually start putting some of them up because some of them are really. Like some of the Argento ones are really nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. Oh, there's a one of them's uh, brilliant. It's the like pure comedy moment with the uh, dad of the chainsaw just chainsawing through the table there. It's quite fun. <laughs> um, Always yeah, good also, times. It, it apparently comes with a double sided poster. Mine didn't come with a double sided poster, which is one of the things, one of the risks that you run with buying things from CEX, I guess. Yep, yep. Um, also, it means that I, could, I probably could get. The twenty-two quid back for it, but it's maybe not going to go on eBay this one. Oh really? We'll get to that. Okay, okay. Just because it's incomplete. Right. Also had like a hellish sticker mark on it. Yeah, so peeling off that sticker was a fucking horrendous task. It's left a proper mark on mine as well, a proper ring mark. Jesus, ah, uh, you like a good ring. Jesus, a day looking good ring mark. Um, yeah. So the edition, um, a three disker. Um, comes with three cuts of the two film. Blu-rays. It? <laughs> comes with two blu two Blu-rays. One with the unrated cut of the film, um, and a whole load of extras on it. And then on disc two is the Krug and Company edit, which is a I've never really looked into. It. It's like a grindhouse edit, I think, or something mm. for it. Uh, an alternate cut of it and the R-rated cut as well. Um, so I'm not sure what's been taken out of that. Also, a whole bunch of um, Additional um, extras on the end of that. There's a whole wealth of documentaries and all the rest. Also includes, as you mentioned earlier on, CD with the remastered film score. Pretty nice. So that's the third disc, which is a standard CD. Um, I, um, 
I would say so loads when I looked at um some of the extras had to be flicked through interviews with Sean Cunningham and Wes Craven and David Hess and blah blah blah. Uh, there's a whole lot of commentaries and stuff as well, uh, which have potentially I would actually quite like to listen to the commentary on this, uh, some of the commentaries on this, um, just to see what the chat is about the making of it. A bit of some nice insights. But um the a lot of these have been ported over from an earlier DVD. Yeah, and I think that's why I, I didn't really get involved in them. I was like, don't get me wrong, that's fine. Yep, do it, whatever. But I was I'm slightly upset there wasn't any really even properly meaty uh, new stuff. But Yeah, totally. It seems... I mean, there was a, there's a lot of stuff to go on here. And I mean, I guess the guys are getting pretty old now. Um, but it does feel like, a, like, you know, they could have done something something nice and new in it I guess um, and interestingly we were talking about my history with the film earlier on I think this is slightly relevant um, I um, while I was waiting on this to turn up uh, I was in the garage and I came across a box of um, DVDs and I found the 2008 UK <laughs> the first uncut edition of this to be released in the UK on DVD um, three disker with the unrated cut, the Craig and Company cut and the R-rated cut and probably most of these extras still sealed (laughs) classic, 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 classic (laughs) didn't know that I had it and have never opened it (laughs) perfect, that sums up all you need to know about this film uh, <laughs> um, I mean, I would say I only had to look at the original cut. Um, it was shot in sixteen mil. It looks, looks terrible. Fucking terrible. It looks atrocious. It's badly lit. It's out of focus quite a lot of the time. The amount of grain uh, is biblical. Yeah, I mean, well, it was shot in sixty mil, then blown up again, wasn't it? And I don't know if this is—is is it from a negative? Oh, fuck, who knows? Anyway, it's it's it bad. It's proper grindhouse looking, anyway. So, um, I mean, to be fair, I mean, uh, the, the grain is rendered amazingly well at it, and it is it is a terrific transfer. Um, yeah. but it is it is what it is. Thick, it's never going to look better with grain, um, yeah. but it's not. Blocky, it's no, there's no artifacts in it, um, but it is wow, yeah. I mean, Jesus, <laughs> if, you, if you're looking to buy, if you're a massive fan of this film, you've probably already got it. Um, but if you're looking to pick it up and expect to see an immaculate restoration, you will find it, but it won't be what you expect, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's as good a restoration as it can possibly be, I think, yeah, definitely. You wouldn't go any further. The thing is, you can't take any of the grain away, otherwise, you destroy the detail behind it. So, uh, yeah, exactly. You just have exactly. to take that on the chin and move on. Uh, yep. Um, I would, uh, if you're a fan of the film, I'd recommend it. Um, I find it hard to believe there's many people out there that would, I don't know, maybe there are. Do you know what I mean? There's loads of young folk that collect arrow films. Yeah, that's true. And yep, yep. stuff's coming out, and they're just like, oh, I heard this is a classic, I'll buy it. Um, yep. And yeah, fair play. I mean, it's an important but there's film. There's folk that they buy every single release. You know, that's, uh, exactly, I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and good luck to them. <laughs> Madness. Well, good luck. Yeah, it's definitely good luck to you. No question about good that. And, yep. and finding a, a life partner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A marmot. Um, the um, now, so that's that version of it. Arrow Blu-ray. I, I believe that the new version that's coming out, so mm. the standard edition, will just have the unrated cut on it. Won't have any of the other cuts. Yeah. Um, we'll have all the extras, I think, or most of them anyway. Uh, won't have the score, obviously. Um, the remake uh, both of us watched on Netflix. It's yep. screening in HD. It looks good. It, it looks good. Looks good. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Even um, there's a lockdown strangling of bandwidth or whatever. It looks perfectly good to me. Didn't notice anything wrong. Totally. With it. And it, it's. Uh, I would say that the film is. Um, uh, it's. I mean, it's certainly the second half of the film's all at night, um, and there's no problem with any of that yep. at all yep. on the, the Netflix version. Uh, they've got their streaming compression down. Uh, they have their shit sorted well by now. So, yeah, yeah, 
Yep. They the compression do. kings win again. Yep. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, there we go. There we have it. Yep. Fun times. I think I, I'd go into the James Furman thing, but I think we've pretty much covered it, to be honest. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think we probably have. Uh, I think he the certainly wasn't... This is one of the classics that wasn't actually released until after he died. Yes, yep, yep. <laughs> uh, no way this would be getting past. Um, I do have plenty of... Uh, I do have plenty of uh, books on the BBFC and censorship and stuff. I've actually not delved into any of them. Didn't have the time. Um, but yeah, Furman basically safe to assume spinning his grave. Oh, uh, he's tunneling to the Earth's core Turbo. as we speak. Turbo, fully into exactly. the Earth's core. Absolutely, all the way down S- through almost like Australia. Setting off a total cataclysm in the middle of the core. Boom! Yeah. Whole Earth. Explodes. Raging. Absolutely raging. He's exploded the earth. That's how fucked off he is. Jesus. Yeah, because the thing is, I think, you know, I think the other thing, we, obviously, his big thing was is it artistically acceptable? And this film is not artistically acceptable. It's There's, there's, there's no. no saving grace in this. This is our, no, exactly. This, is, this no. is made to fuck you off. End of story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Uh, it riles him up. Yep. Right Beyond up. Belief. Right pissed off. Um, so I think that uh, that brings us to a close I think it pretty much um, does I think we have to oh you might have to fucking talk me through where we're going after this oh well we are going so we have to say we went that mental and shows quite ahead. a lot of films yeah 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 totally um, so we are so the original last season left obviously was uh, Wes Craven and we are sticking with Wes Craven and we are going to watch A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 yay Dream Warriors from 1987. Yes. Um, How did we come to that, that conclusion? I have not seen... Oh, it's because you hadn't seen it. Have you not seen it? Or have you not seen it for a while or something? I can't remember. I It's one of those films that I would say right now I've not seen. Right. But I may well have seen I have got one when I, when I watch it really, again. really strong image memory from it. But other than that... Right. And that's what, that's what I ultimately think is a great film. It's like, oh, that is fucking amazing imagery. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But other than that, I don't remember very much about it. Right, okay. Well, I think it's, a, I think it's like a, a... I'm excited about it. A, I'm going to watch part two before I watch part three as well, so I'm going to have a double yeah. myself. That's when they, they introduced the uh, giant horse, um, <laughs> which comes into the end part of part three. Right. So you've got a giant horse and some... F- what was it? I think it's a... A pterodactyl? I can't remember exactly, right. but all that stuff's in there. Oh, brilliant. Great. I mean, I'm it's such a crossover. It. It's um, like watching 60,000 BC in a Freddy film at the same time. <laughs> Esme, fucking hell, seven minutes to 11. <laughs> I know. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Some terrible parenting there. <laughs> it's not bad parenting. It's just like, fucking hell. It's okay, it's okay, darling, off you go. No, she can ask me the question. I'll, uh, I'll tell you. Did I'll... you spill it all over the carpet? <laughs> okay, right. Right, I think, uh, I think I'm going to have to go. I think we're going to have to cut it. We're going to have to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to have to cut there. <laughs> Jesus. My seven-year-old daughter's come down to get a drink of... At almost... Water. At 11 o'clock. 10 to... At night. They just spilled all over the carpet. Right. I better lovely go and, times. I better go lovely that. times. So, Always a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be back with um, well, some sort of dinosaur based Elm Street film. I can't wait. Lovely. Can't wait. Happy days. Um, okay, folk, uh, folks, uh, thanks for listening, and we will see you next time. Bye. Ta-ra.